Hey guys, so today I'm showing you a wig that I have redone so many times since I bought it. So I want to say two years ago, I actually tried to um, update my review on it and it's no longer available, which is kind of a bummer. However, there are a lot of other vendors. I will link below where I get um, all of my full lace wigs and just know that what you're buying is raw material. So it's not styled. It's going to look like a mop, um, which is pretty much what my hair looks like if I don't have a haircut. So, you know, she's not going to have bangs. She's not going to have any angles, no layers. What appears to be layers is not actually layers. It's just the, um, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, I guess what you get when you're ventilating. So you're taking the, use a cord here, you're taking the, here's the hair strand, right? So you have the strand, you create a, a little loop like this so that you can then take the hook through the lace, grab it, pull it through and make the knot and pull it through, which I'm not gonna do with this, but when you pull it through, you essentially have, you know, two ends left over. And so that is what you see. Oh God, please stop tangling. Okay. That's what you see with um, some of these shorter pieces on these cheaper wigs. It's just the, the leftover piece with the remaining being the, the actual length. So what you're buying, you know, these are cheap. They're going to have some of these little short pieces in there, even though, I mean, you can see it's full lace. Like this is this is the lace. Um, I get the beige. They call it transparent. It's wrong. It's not transparent. Okay, transparent if this is your skin tone, yay for you. But not everyone has a skin tone. So I'm, I'm offended by the fact that it's called transparent because it's very misleading. It is not. It has color and the color is beige. I actually got in a dispute with a vendor over it because I specifically asked for beige or transparent. And they said it is skin color and it was brown. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's cool when all your customers are brown. Um, but even among brown, there's different hues. Anyway, I digress. Um, be careful when you're buying uh, lace wigs because unfortunately you're dealing with people who don't understand that, you know, we all come in different colors. And it's very important that they are honest and disclose what the color of the lace is because you need to get it right. So if you're um, light skinned like I am, fair skinned, uh, you're going to need the beige or the, the transparent, which is whatever, um, in order for this to work. Now, of course, transparent being beige, even among light color skin, just look, just look at the beauty section of any store you know, be it CVS or Walmart or whatever, you'll see a wide variety of even just for white people. So, I mean, we don't all fit the same either. So unfortunately, it would be like picking up makeup and saying, here we go, this'll, this'll work. Um, yeah, it's pretty close, it's gonna get close. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see now. Um, if you can ignore the fact that my roots are really weird here, the, the roots, unfortunately, when I originally gave her roots, the hair color, I didn't know hair dye could go bad. It totally did. So, you know what? From now on, I'm a direct dye girl. I freaking am so annoyed with the, with dyes in general. But okay, a whole nother side rant. I'm so sorry. I keep doing these side rants. But um, fuck regular hair color. It's so annoying. Never works right. So, um Anyway, I had to color correct because it, it was terrible. Um, and yeah, okay, fine. It, it, it probably went bad. There's no expire date on it anywhere. I bought it from Sally's. I mixed it per directions. And I've dyed my hair a million colors. I'm not a total noob. I bleach my hair myself with bleach, not hair color. So I, again, I'm not an idiot. I know how to work these chemicals. But I gotta say, I'm just so over <laughs> I'm so over um, <clears throat> a lot of the extra crap that comes with it. So I'm just direct dye. I either bleach it or I direct dye it and I'm just over permanent color. 
Um, it's just annoyed the hell out of me lately. So anyway, um, this wig kind of got ruined by all of that because the colors just weren't coming out right. And with direct dye, and I tested the strands. So if you guys are commenting like, you got a test, I totally did. Um, but like I said, I, I can only assume it was bad and that the chemical reaction wasn't working right. But anyway, um, oh, wow, that's cute. Fun. Um, that lash has just decided it just doesn't want to stay in the inner corner. So true. Um, it, it seems to happen a lot. But anyway, I just wanted to show you. So um, excusing the weirdo colors that I have going on here. Basically, this was a blonde wig all the way through. I'm going to suggest that you do not do that. The reason she's so short, I had to cut off the length because she was raggedy. Raggedy, raggedy Ann hair. No one wants that. So, uh, and I bleach my own hair. I don't know what on earth they do, but they managed to completely ruin the wig. So um, bleach it yourself. Because at least then, if you if you mess it up, it was a learning experience. But I mean, I bought her messed up. So anyway, um, it also was very tricky doing the reverse, just dyeing root and not touching the lace or touching the knot. So again, I'm going to stress, just buy it raw color as it comes. Don't ask for a pre-done color because they will mess that up. They are not hairstylists and neither are you, but hey, who cares, right? Again, at least you have a learning experience. If you buy from them a custom color, which they will gladly do, you will probably be one of the many commenters who's like, hey, what's up with these roots that are like two inches long in some places and not in others? So again, she's going to get messed up. It might as well be by you um, because then you can get better at it and you can learn and make this your practice wig. So anyway, um, I'm going to advise against it. I mean, unless you're buying from someone who is a professional, which they're going to be a few grand. Because, you know, if I go to the salon and really get like the kind of color I give my wigs, you're going to spend over $60 upwards of $120 if you're doing foils, you know, if you're lifting and then doing a, um, a color correct or any color at all on top of the bleach it's gonna be like 120 bucks at least for my area so you know if you look at it you're buying a wig that you're gonna put the work into yourself so the money's coming from somewhere right so it's gonna be your time or your dime you gotta pick one so uh, anyway unless you're buying from like freedom couture where you're paying for the hairstylist to cut the hair you're paying for that person to also dye the hair on top of the raw material. This is why there are a few thousand. And this is why the ones I get are way less. It's not because places like Freedom Couture who do all that for you. It's not because they're a ripoff. It's just, it is what it is. So when you buy the ones that I suggest, just know you are not buying anything pre-done for you except for the ventilating. You know, they did that for you, um, which I have still on this one, I had to touch up because they didn't come far enough on the lace. And I had to add these pieces in because um, they it didn't have an ear tab. So I actually cut the ear tabs out from the additional lace that was overhanging. So if you're DIY, you're DIY. These are gonna be DIY wigs. You are not gonna buy one ready to go and put on, you're gonna put in some work. So gonna get the raw hair, you're gonna bleach the knots, which I'm not gonna go over in this video. Bleach the knots. You know, when you're bleaching people, use foil. And if you're saying, how do I put foil on knots? Okay, but you lay it down flat onto your wig form and that's your foil and you put it on top. Why foil? It needs it needs the radiant heat. Um, it would be better if you, which I'm actually gonna try to put a heat pad and like, you know, with like packing tape, I'm gonna try to tape the heat pad down because you need, your skull has heat that comes from it and that's a part of that process. If you want those roots 
like white or super light and not orange. Because let's face it, if you don't lift them high enough, they're gonna be orange. And then if you're like, I'll just use some purple shampoo, don't because that purple will dye the lace purple. So it's a direct dye. It'll dye your clothes, it'll dye your lace. So um, don't get ahead of yourself, just do it right, okay? So lift those knots to the right color, which um, <clears throat> needs to be a seven uh, at the very minimum, which I think seven is a little too. I do nine or 10. So get them, get them pretty close to white. Um, and then they will tone beautifully with a real toner because a real toner is not going to tone your lace. It's just going to tone the hair. Your purple shampoo has direct dye. That shit will dye your lace. Uh, and whatever color you're coloring your hair, again, doing direct dyes, which I like direct dyes because I can see the color before I add it on. But again, it will stain your lace. So don't be sloppy because if you're sloppy, that's how you're like, oh, I'm going to dye it this cute red. And then you get the red all over the lace and it looks like you have red skin. So don't do it. Okay. I feel like I'm lecturing a lot. All right, so what else do we have? Um, so dye the roots the right way. You're gonna need some radiant heat. At the very minimum, put some foil down. If you're like, I don't have a heat pad, I'm not experimenting like that, fine. Just use the foil, it's fine. It will at least bounce back the heat from the chemical reaction itself. And it will be better than, than plastic wrap or nothing. So just do that. Um, I know you guys are really scared about over bleaching, like having it bleed through. It's fine. It's fine. What you don't want is to not, is to go through all this and then not have your knots bleached. Just bleach the shit. And if you mess up a spot, then you just go in because it's so much easier to get brown hair dye in like a level four or whatever and just touch up a little patch than to do the whole thing over be a total wimp about your application. And then when it's all said and done, you're like, oh, they're they're orange or they didn't lighten at all. I mean, come on, you know, so just, just do it. Don't worry about it. You can always um, correct a little patch, but, but redoing an entire application really sucks. So just, you know, don't, don't worry so much about that. It's pretty easy. I'm not saying you should, but I've even used a Sharpie. <laughs> because it was like the tiniest little spot. And I was like, I'm not mixing dye for this. And I have direct dyes and like chestnut and like dark browns. I could have sat there with a tiny little art brush and done that. I just whipped, I just opened up a Sharpie and went and she was done. So um, it was a tiny spot, but you know, if you got a couple patches or you got like a big patch, I mean, again, direct dye, there's really no mixing. You can take it straight out of the bottle, pop it on there, let it sit for 30 minutes and wash it out. So just don't let it touch the lace. But um, it's really easy to work with. You're not mixing chemicals. It's it's just so nice. Just be careful with it. That's all. Because it, it works so well, it'll, it'll stain your hands, stain your clothes, stain your lace, everything. Um, so yeah, so uh, go ahead and bleach those knots um, because it does help. So um, it absolutely helps. There were some spots where I was trying to color correct because I've done these roots so many times and accidentally touched the knots and I was super annoyed because I think I've done these roots at least two times, maybe three times because of all the problems I was having with the dye itself. But you can see here, um, you're not seeing black dots. These little baby hairs I cut just because I don't glue mine down. Um, I just don't. And naturally I have baby hairs that I don't do anything to. I just let them sit there and be themselves. So for me, um, this looks totally natural for me. This is what I do with my own baby hairs. If I pull my hair back, I just let them do their thing. My hair spray down a few wispies, but I mean, I'm not I'm not laying them down on myself naturally, so I don't do it to my wig. So if you're uncomfortable laying down baby hairs, you don't have to do it. It's a style. If you don't like that style, don't do the style. You can still have, um, you know, a, a natural style. If you look at your own hair, 
Now, I, I don't have a cap or anything right here. So that's actually my roots. This is my hairline. Yeah, see see my baby hairs? Like, I don't, I don't lay them down or do anything. I just let them, I just let them sit. So do the same with your wig. I mean, it's fine. Just let them, just let them do what they do and it'll look really natural. I feel like sometimes you get a wig look because you're fussing too much. You know, you're trying to fix it too much. And, and I think we've all done it where you're like, oh, it's just so big. It's just like, oh, it looks like a wig. And then you're just like overly styling and hairspraying and mousse. Um, just let it be, girl. Just let it be, you know. Um, and I mean, what's what's your biggest nightmare that the wind blows and these little flaps open. I mean, if that seriously bothers you, you could do a little touch of glue or um, mousse and and just put that down. But like, I don't even care. Um, it's like, yeah, it's a wig and newsflash, my hair isn't naturally blonde either. And newsflash, I often wear colored contacts, just not today. Um, I just, uh, depends on your personality. But like, don't be afraid of, playing with styles and then being like, oh no, you know, I mean, I think bullying is just the worst thing in the world, but a lot of the bullying's in your head. A lot of that stuff is right here. Um, most people are seriously not judging you the way you're judging yourself. You are judging yourself hard. Like, you need to leave yourself alone. <laughs> um, you are the meanest person you know. Uh, and I need you to admit that. You are the meanest person because you are so hard on yourself. So yeah, this is this is the the hairline again. She she's not perfect because I had to redo her so many times. And um, you know, I, I got my my own two-tone coming through with my roots and then some blonde. Cause my roots are long. I'm I'm gonna do an ombre next. So I'm letting letting my roots go, which I hate. Oh, that look. That grown out look where everybody's like, um, Time to time to do your roots. I'm like, yep, yep. I'm I'm not though going them out. So anyway, <clears throat> let's look at the back. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Hi, Foz. I heard you barking upstairs. Who was it? Someone walking on the street? How dare they? They're just not allowed. So um, I realized I did my part off center. I never do a center part, and of course I'm like sitting here like, oh, oh, all right. But let's take a look. So if you guys are scrutinizing now, I will tell you no one else is going to do that. But I just want you to see what she looks like for real. Now, of course, when I was parting the hair, I did pick areas that would not show the inner cap construction because, you know, they are pieces that come together. I think that's the actual cap right there. Um, but again, I'm doing loose, um, I'm not pulling it tight and, and hairspring and, you know, like I'm just, it's like a loose, unfixed hairstyle. So, um, honestly, people are not scrutinizing other people's hair like that. They will look, glance and decide in about two seconds whether they like it or they don't like it and they move on with their life. I don't know anyone who stops me to say that they don't like my hair. If they stop me, it's because they're like, hey, I love your rainbow hair or whatever I have at the time. Or, oh, it looks like a mermaid. I love it, blah, blah, blah. Like, no one has ever stopped me to be like, yo, like, your hair looks awful. Like, no one does that. And if they do, you should just be like, wow, and you're so charming. Seriously, I, I mean, you're just the nicest person. Um, and just be super sarcastic because I'm like, damn, like, what, what is that? No one has ever done that. So you're your worst critic. Don't worry about it. So um, if I, if I take her off and show you, cause I don't want to pull my own hair. So see if I can, yeah, there she goes. Alrighty. So here she is on the inside. Um, again, she's, she's an older wig. She's been redone. This band is looking, looking real sad. <laughs> this band can use some help, but you can see the inner cap construction. 
And when I talk about, you know, things showing, I mean like this part, some of the reinforcement can sometimes show through if you are, you know, cutting in in those spots. But for the most part, like even this style, I just avoided those areas and I was still able to get the style that I wanted out of it. So you can see here the baby hairs that, um, that I cut in. Some of them come with it, but I, I did those. And the best time to style is when she's wet. So style when she's wet and she will stay where you put her basically. So I just took with a rat tail comb, just the tiniest little front section, pulled them down while it was wet and combed back the rest. And then when it was dry, I went with a razor and I just razored the front hairs. So this is my wig cap. I don't always wear one, but I had one today. I kind of have a love-hate love relationship with them. But how I actually have my hair up is like this. And this isn't a new idea. Um, a lot of people do this where um, you use uh, for the bobby pins. I think a lot of people, or at least my generation and younger, just don't know how to use them because... We grew up with spandex being in existence. So we just use elastic bands for everything, but the bobby pins, if you use them right, they totally work. And there's some really great tutorials online from hairdressers on how to properly use a bobby pin. And by the way, it's not doing this and opening it. Uh-uh, don't do that. Like you're gonna, you're gonna put it where you want it. You're gonna twist. And you're going to go in opposite direction of the way it's going to go. And it is not falling out. Um, and then you just need to push it backwards to get it back out. But um, pins totally work. Um, and they are the best way, especially if you want a comfortable long wear. So I'm just going to take mine apart so that you can see. Oh Lord, I'm knocking stuff over. Ah, okay. So I'm just pushing them backwards. I'm not, do not bend your pins. Just push them backwards. Okay. I think I got them all. So this is, oh, there, there was the other one. I'm like, where did she go? She's like hanging on. Okay. So this is it unfolding. That's all I do is I just fold, I just crisscross um, like that. And oh God, what, what is going on? What, 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 what? These are new and I swear I just need to, anyway, another side rant every time I get new lashes. It's like I need to like over bend them inner for a C curve so that they stay because I feel like when you buy them, they're just too straight. Anyway, side rant. So now that I'm ready for yodeling, um, this is this is what I do with my hair. And it's so tempting to, to like chop these ends off because, oh God, there's a tiny bit of green left over. I'm sad that dyes don't stay as long as I would like, but... This is what I do with my natural hair is I just braid it because it's very long and like so many of you, it does appear a lot thicker than it really is when it's out and fluffy with like air in between. You know, it can get, especially if you have a curl. If I curl my hair, wow, I suddenly have gorgeous volume. So if you already have curly hair, braid this. You don't need to do cornrows. That takes too long. Just two braids. Just split it down the middle. Braid. Put in your bands. And then you just, you know, do that. Lay flat as you go around. And you put in your bobby pins. Again, I showed you how to do that. But you should totally YouTube it and watch a professional show you up close how to put in your pins, they will work. I used four of them, two for each of my little tails here. And you'll make the perfect little thing. 
And that way, at least, you know, I mean, again, what, what's your biggest fear? Your wig gets snatched. You have a really cute hairstyle braid. Um, I only had this on because I haven't, because I just did this color. I didn't, I didn't do anything to this cap here, but I'm going to try something new where I'm going to try to permanently either adhere to have a bunch of different fabrics with different colors that are close to my skin, or I'm going to use spray glue and my foundation. I hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done it with makeup like the regular way in hairspray, so I already know what makeup has worked. So I think I'm finally, with her being freshly washed, I think I'm finally at the stage where I'm going to try the, the permanent. Um, but anyway, if it's a success, you'll see that video too. Not anytime soon though. I take forever to put these up because I just, I just don't have time. Um, I'm busy with other stuff. So anyway, I'm just going to pull my hair out so you can see kind of what I'm dealing with because yes, it's long because I love short hair, but I also don't love going in often to get it cut. So I just get lazy and just grow it out and grow it out and grow it out to where it gets stupid long like this to where like I get food stuck in it and I don't even know, you know, cause like you lean forward, it goes like this and dips into everything in front of you. I remember in high school, I used to get paint and the ends of my hair because you're like working and you do just that lean forward and it would start <laughs> going all over your palette. And of course you're like, by the time you realize it is when you're brushing and you're like, what is this crazy knot? And you're like, oh, no way. You have acrylic paint all in the ends. Okay. So, um, here it is. I don't have thick hair by any means. It's fine, fine strand, fine hair. I think I have the same hair follicles as anyone else. I think it's just that the, the individual hair strands themselves are not that thick. So it gives... The appearance of it being thinner or less volume. I don't know. But anyway, this is what I'm working with naturally. So. Um, even though it's fine, it is, it is still too heavy for a high ponytail. So I don't even know how you girls with thick hair do all that. Because it gives me... Gives me a headache. Anyway. So quarantine life with my sweatpants. Okay. So hopefully this was helpful. It was it's just a little tidbit thing. I don't want super long videos. But um, I'll give you other little pieces. Like for um, doing the permanent cap option because I just don't, I don't like, I don't like this band here. It's more opaque than the rest of it. It always shows. I cannot find for the life of me any that haven't done that. I have tried putting these on a wig form using spray glue so that it stays as a permanent cap. And that's actually what I'm going to be using to stitch on because this super thin material really works well. It's just that it'll run if you don't have a hem. And so hence, that's why I was using the spray glue to stop it from running. And then it was in the perfect dome shape from being on my wig form. Um, I put a plastic bag over it, by the way, or you know, you can use saran wrap, but anyway, put down some plastic so you don't spray glue it onto the fabric of your wig form. That would be unfortunate. Uh, you should have a wig form that's about your size. Gosh, so many tips. I feel like these short videos are just not enough. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I've already talked way too much. Um, and, you know, you want other bits and pieces. There's a ton of other videos and I'll put those up as well. But this was just just showing what I've done with an otherwise worthless destroyed wig that had terrible hair on it. I had to deep condition her. I had to do some correction on her from a total coloring faux pas. Um, but she's salvageable. So um, 
you know, have that one wig that's just been a little nightmare and, and just use the hell out of that one so that when you finally get your next one that's nice and primed and, and unruined, um, you have all of that experience from your little crappy one that you got. And by the way, when I bought her, she was a 14 inch and I just chopped all those ends off because I mean, she she's like a 12 or a 10 now because that's just how gross those ends were. All right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend because um, I know we finally got some nice days. So I'm going to go outside. Bye.